part three, we're going to talk about joining the teeth and using the depth gauge to set the depth of the rakers. The joiner is a cast iron piece. Uh, this one happens to be made by Atkins and Company out of Indianapolis. Uh, I have two of them. I use this one to set the rakers and I use this one as the joiner. Just easier for me to leave it set up with a file in it and then use this one to set the depth gauge. Joining a saw involves filing the teeth so that they're all the same height. If you look closely at this saw, you see there's a difference between it and the standard cross cut that you've probably seen and used. A standard cross cut is flat. All the teeth are the same height. And the line along the top of the teeth is a straight line. Most one man cross cut saws are what's called breasted. In other words, they have a curve to them. What that does for you is when you have a breasted saw, only a few teeth are actually in contact with the wood at any one time. So that this tooth is going to cut more aggressively than one that's flat and all the teeth are riding across the wood. When you're cutting wet wood, that makes a difference. This joining gauge has a clamp that holds the, the file in place. Using a screwdriver you can tighten that screw up and bend the file. By bending the file you can make it follow that curve so that it touches the teeth on both sides. See how it's not rocking? So as it goes across it keeps that breasting or curve to the teeth. Now the goal of joining is to take the file and run it across the top of all the teeth. Any teeth that are taller are going to be filed. What you want to be able to do is make a small dot on the end of all of the So teeth. that they're all the same height. You may have heard the expression, he's acting out of joint. It comes from saw filing. If the teeth aren't all the same height, one tooth will cut more than the one next to it because the tall tooth is trying to take out more wood than the short tooth. It makes the saw hop and buck through the, the cut so that it doesn't do a good job. So when you're out of joint, you're not working well. After we've jointed the saw and all the teeth are the same height, we use the depth gauge to set the depth of the raker. After we've jointed the whole blade so that we have a shiny point on the end of each tooth, and all these teeth are the same exact height, we then go along with the set gauge and we set the depth of the raker teeth. This gauge is shimmed to set that surface 15 thousandths below this surface. So as this rides on the teeth, these surfaces right on the teeth on either side. This surface is then 15 thousandths below the tip of that tooth. And we take our file and dress that raker down till it's below this surface. We don't want to hit this point over here. We want to have that remain at the 15 thousandths higher than this. Now we have that tooth set. We go on and we set the depth on the next tooth. This plate 
this plate on this gauge is hardened so the file just slides across it and doesn't cut. That way you can go across and dress all these teeth down and not wear out your gauge. This will fit on either side. It'll either go on that tooth like that or on that tooth like that. When I jointed the teeth, I took the point off of that tooth so I can then put my thumb over the top of it and make sure that I don't hit it. I go down to the next tooth and do the same thing. Until I've done all the teeth on the saw blade. Old Smealock here again. Thanks for watching. Have you subscribed yet? If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment and click the thumbs up.